shit. It's the Luke Hamilton Tonight podcast. I'm Luke Hamilton. It's uh, it's Monday night, July thirteenth. Thir- yeah, fuck thirteenth. Uh, I just felt like doing a solo podcast tonight. Cause frankly, I'm really, really bored. I got nothing else going on right now. This lockdown thing has just been so boring to me. Um, and I guess when you're that bored, you just start a podcast. I'm just drinking some espresso right now. Uh, I thought I was going to pass out earlier. Been up since 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. My body can't really get used to this lockdown. <clears throat> oh, it's fucking good. Really fucking good. Yeah, I don't know, like, uh, you know, I had a job for a couple years where I had I had to wake up at five in the morning every day, so now my body just can't go back to, like, a deplorable schedule, I just wake up that early every day anyways, which I guess is good, but I do have those, uh, drowsy afternoons anyway uh what was i gonna talk about um oh yeah weed weed in canada has like kind of gone out of control maybe in my mind i guess like when i was a kid it like it was illegal so it it was kind of hard to get you didn't really know what you were going to get. You always had to go to, like, some guy's house, and, he, like, his best friend would just be, like, out cold on the couch in his living room. And then he'd pull out, like, two bags, like, two one-pound bags of weed, and he'd be like, what do you want, indoor or outdoor? I'm like, S- like, what is it? <laughs> Kush, Indica, Sativa, like, what is it? Like, nobody really knew back then. So now it's it's weird that it's like so easy to get. It's easy to know what you're getting. There's like stats of the strains, which is awesome. I'm not knocking it. And it's also great that you can get like CBD weed. But in my mind, it still feels like kind of illegal. And I've been out of the game for so long. I've honestly, I stopped smoking weed regularly maybe seven years ago. And still really don't. Although I've I've had some like CBD stuff, which has been pretty chill. But I'm totally out of it. Like, I barely know what, what the quality is or like what the service available is. So I was talking to my buddy the other day. And he said that uh, he buys all of his weed off of this website out of BC, which is just so fitting because, like, like, what other part of Canada is going to have that kind of service? Like, of course it's BC. So I, I was looking into it last night, <clears throat> just searching up, like, <laughs> BC Bud <laughs> into Google. There's, like, 30 websites called BC Bud, and they're all selling weed online. Like, it's fucking hilarious to me. This is the world we live in. You can just get weed from BC whenever you want. You know, it used to be a treat. Like, somebody would have BC bud. You still didn't really know what it was. It was just like a a bag that he was claiming as BC bud. You had to take his word for it. It looked good, so why wouldn't it be? Take the chance, you know? 15 bucks for a gram or something. Back then. So I found this website uh, called BC Buds Online. Uh, in their words, it's uh, Canada's number one online cannabis retailer. I guess I'll have to take their word for it. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to know? It's good advertising, though. They got tons of crap on here. Um, blue cheese strain. 
Yeah, I don't know about that, man. I don't know if I want to smoke something that like tastes like blue cheese. Blue Dream. Uh, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Alien OG. Alien OG. <laughs> like Alien Orgy. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, sign me up for the Alien Orgy. And I got a ton of hash and stuff. Edibles. Medical stuff, all the CBD oils, you know, the fancy stuff that your mom likes. Um, look, they got something called a berry log. CBD berry log. Let's take a gander. Yeah. 200 milligrams CBD per cake. There's one cake per, the, per package, though. It's $28 for a cake. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. <laughs> like, you're, at that rate, you're, like, they're almost forcing you to buy more of it. Like, just one? Come on. I'm going to buy that. It'll take, like, a week to get to my house on the other side of the country. I'm going to eat it blast off into the fourth dimension then I'm just gonna want another one CBD berry log fucking love it oh they have olive oil THC olive oil let's take, check this out like for cooking or like to drink drink the oil <laughs> THC olive oil 300 milligrams of THC for a 100 milliliter bottle. <laughs> the picture of the bottle is extra virgin olive oil. It has like a picture of an, a wizard with like alien face. Like a bearded alien. Yeah, these guys are not fucking around. I find it like kind of ironic that the entire reason why, like, the argument for legalizing weed in Canada was, like, to get it away from the children, and then these guys are just making, like, like chocolate bars, cakes, gummy bears, alien orgies, like, everything that kids like. Like, how are you going to stop it? Again, I'm not knocking it, like, love weed culture. But it, it's it's so ironic. <laughs> yeah. Make it harder for kids to get it, but let's also make fucking chocolate bars. I am probably going to buy CBD weed off these guys, though, in all honesty. Even though it still kind of seems illegal to me. Like, there's still something kind of shady about it, but... That's because for my entire life it was illegal. You had to, like, meet up at a park or something. And do that like weird sleight of hand. You're you're uh, you're grabbing the bag out of the guy's hand, but you're not really making like eye contact. You're just kind of looking around to make sure the cops aren't there. It was so weird, but like hilarious. I'm glad those days are over, but uh, I do kind of feel bad for young people these days that never had to grow up trying to get their weed off of like a like somebody that your friend kind of knew. Or like a friend of a friend showing up to somebody's house, you know. Their dog runs at you. It was always some big dog, like a pit bull or some shit. Protection dog. Oh man, these guys actually have uh, Charlotte's Web. That's awesome. That's actually a really famous strain. It's uh, it, it was it's grown in Colorado, but maybe it's grown in BC now. It's kind of weird that they have it. Uh, for people who don't know, Charlotte's Web is a really famous strain of high CBD weed that was named after this uh, this little girl in the states that uh, had had this 
weird rare condition where she was having seizures like all day every day and her parents were trying to figure out um, a way of fixing that problem so she could actually develop because she, she like she couldn't talk she couldn't read or anything like just seizures all day like imagine that like you can't really get anything done if you're seizing up all day and then um, so these guys in Colorado heard about the story they started developing this strain that was 100% CBD. So I guess the parents moved out to Colorado so that they could uh, actually buy this and use this legally. Uh, they got to Colorado, started giving their daughter the, uh, the CBD oil, like the concentrate, because you can't let like a little kid sm- like smoke a bong, obviously. <laughs> it would be fucking ridiculous. Um, but um, immediately there was a huge benefit. It like, like decreased her seizures by like 90%. So now she can actually develop and, and read and be a normal kid. It's pretty awesome. I, I'm actually really surprised that this website has it. And like a lot of it, like it's almost 700 grams in stock. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of fucking weed. But I wonder if they grow it there now. Like ha- they like they have the seeds, or they're just shipping in from Colorado. I don't know. It doesn't mention it. Either way, that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's enough weed talk. I'll probably hit up that website later or something like that. <laughs> Buy some weed. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like crazy to even say. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna go buy weed later, legally. Off a website. Apparently shipping is really fast too. The fucking times we live in, man. And uh, uh, by the way, this isn't like an ad for BC Buds. But uh, if anybody that works at BC Buds is listening to this, uh, (laughs) hook your boy up with a sponsorship. That would be fucking awesome. I'll promote the shit out of that. Anyway, I'm going to take a a full 180 on this podcast and start talking about uh, this new app that people are not, uh, I wouldn't say raving about, but definitely talking a lot of shit about. Um, It's it's Parler. Parler is this like supposed alt-right, like the bastion of the alt-right. This is where everybody goes if they've been... Uh, banned off of Twitter or Instagram or, you know, any, any like, obvious left-leaning site. Even Reddit now. Like, yeah, Reddit's, like, gotten rid of a bunch of threads and they've all shown up on Parler. Um, yeah, I just have it open right now because I, I downloaded it last night and I just wanted to see what it was about. Because it was really interesting to me that, like, all these people are just flooding to Parler um, all of a sudden, even though I'm pretty sure this app has been around for a couple of years. It looks like there's some older accounts here. Um, and when you first boot it up, it's not, like, like, over, like, it's it's not, like, full of, like, fucking neo-Nazis like people like to talk about. Um, but it's cl- it clearly leans right. That's very clear. Um, just like when you sign up for Twitter, they have a bunch of recommended profiles that you can follow. It's the same deal with Parler, except when you sign up, it gives you the list of recommended profiles to take a gander at the first one on the top of the list is fucking Ted Cruz. So that that'll tell you a lot about what this app is about. Uh very very right leaning. Doesn't seem like in a bad way, not like a not in like a racist way or like a weird fucking weird way, but it seems like there's a lot of republicans on here. But Ted Cruz, man, that's so weird. <laughs> like, if like this guy used an AR-15 to cook bacon, 
And if you haven't seen that video, I urge you to, to watch it because it's the most fucking ridiculous thing I've ever seen. This app is like the anti-Twitter. Like everything on Twitter is is blue. Like all the themes and everything, the color scheme is, is all uh, blue. Um, with Parler, everything's red. So it's like it's like liberals versus conservatives. It's fucking weird. Like it's so obvious what they're trying to do here. It's like it's almost like segregating like two sides of the political spectrum in the digital world. It's really fucking fascinating. And there's a bunch of Canadians on here too. It's not like it's just like a weird American thing. Um there's there's definitely like a lot of conservative Canadians. I've seen a bunch of different accounts. Um, the craziest one that I've seen on the the Canadian side of things is Proud Boys Canada. Yeah, which I, <laughs> I didn't think was an actual thing. Like when you type in when you search Canada in the search bar, Proud Boys is like on top, which is really fucking weird. It doesn't look like they're that active, though. Like, there was, there's a couple posts from yesterday and the day before, but then before that, it's like a year ago. And they must operate out of, like... They, they must operate around Hamilton. Because a couple of these posts are about uh, those Lock Street riots a year ago. So it's kind of weird. And it's all, you know, it's it's exactly what you would expect. It's all Trudeau must go and the right is right and all that stuff, you know. I don't know how to feel about the Proud Boys. I'm still not too sure if it's like a straight up joke. But it's really, it's really jokey. But yeah, I haven't, uh, I've been on this surfing around here for... Uh, you know, a few hours at least, and I haven't I haven't seen any any left leaning people on this app. It's all like super patriotic, super right leaning, and yet I haven't seen anything negative. <clears throat> nothing like like definitely nothing that would get you banned on Twitter. Other than the fact that these people are clearly conservative and maybe nationalistic. I mean, there's a lot of, like, flags being thrown around here in people's bios. But it's def definitely interesting to me. It's so bizarre. It's just, like, the, the anti... The anti-woke, the anti-Twitter, <laughs> the anti-everything. Maybe it's going to be beneficial for people on the right, and maybe it's just going to fizzle out. But it's pretty, it's pretty funny that it's, it's become like a bastion of hope for people on the right. Even though when I, I read the user agreement when I was signing up, and it's the exact same user agreement that Twitter uses. So I don't know how that's better. I mean, everything you post on there, it belongs to Parler. Like, legally, they can use it. It just becomes their property, which is the same user agreement that Facebook has, Instagram has, Twitter has. I don't think Reddit had the same user agreement. I think it was a lot more like a forum, like an old school internet forum. Although I didn't use Reddit that much at all. Um, I should though. I should start using Reddit. I have a bunch of buddies that go on Reddit all the time and uh, they swear by it. Front page of the internet, they call it, right? But it's set up so much like an old school uh, internet forum from like the 90s. You know, for anybody who's listening who's like fucking ancient like me, probably knows the, the early days of internet forums. So it's not as like user friendly as Twitter might be or Facebook might be. Like things aren't just coming at you. You, you got to do some digging. Um, but I hear it's a lot more rewarding. There's a lot more information on there. And there's a lot more news on there, like real news. So I'm probably going to check that out. 
Either way, I'm not, I, I'm not sure about Parler. I don't know if it's going to take off. I don't know if it's going to be like a big player in anything. But just like with any app that gets some traction, like it's good to like set up an account. Maybe not even make any posts. Just like figure it out. See what the deal is. If it starts to take off, then at least you have the account, right? And you know how to use it. I mean, I had a Twitter page for, <clears throat> I had a Twitter account for years and didn't make any posts on it because I thought it was stupid. And it wasn't until like I got, I got into college, maybe six years ago, I actually started using it because it's important for branding. You know, you can, you can use it to, you can use social media to your advantage for sure. To promote things and do that kind of shit. To promote yourself. To promote your artwork. I mean, as as a musician and an artist, it's always uh, a lot easier to use social media to your advantage as like a publicity tool. And you can get you can get things out that way. You can get a lot more traction that way. It would be insane to try to do it an old school way, like put up posters somewhere. Like, if you're having a show, you're going to put up a fucking poster outside of a bar. Nobody looks at posters. Nobody pays attention. And, like, traditional ads? Is anybody anybody in five years that's going to run a traditional ad, like, on NBC, is wasting their fucking money? (laughs) Like, you're going to have so much more reach if you just go on Facebook. Maybe not even Facebook. I don't even know if Facebook's going to be that relevant in 10 years. But definitely Twitter. Twitter's going to stick around. I, I, don't think, I don't think Jack Doris is going to let that one slide. I think it's just going to keep growing, keep, keep getting more powerful. And they're going to ban whoever they need to ban so that it's more inclusive. And those banned people will just go to the parlor. And then it, <laughs> this huge division will just start happening. Like, you know what I've been thinking about recently because of all this? Because I'm sure all of you are just dying to know my opinion. Uh, (laughs) Like, why isn't there just a social media page that is 100% neutral? Like, somebody just sets it up. uh, Anybody can join. Anybody can say whatever. Anybody can post whatever. And there's, like, a Mad Max kind of user agreement where everyone just police themselves. Just figure it out. And if you don't like it, you don't have to be on it. Because there's clearly other options. I mean, like, if you would hate that, then you could go to fucking Twitter. Like, no one's really forcing you to use these services. But why isn't there one that's just 100% neutral? Like, come on here. Speak your mind. Do whatever. Get whatever job done that you, you think you need to do. Promote your business. Whatever. And if there's something that you don't like going on, like, you, you you know, you hate this post somebody said, you know, fuck it, like, figure it out yourself. Like, I don't think the internet should be holding your hand through your life experience, you know? That's not how the internet used to be. Like, nobody was policing you. I mean, I guess it's like, um, in some ways a good thing, in some ways a uh, really bad thing, because <laughs> you can get away with a lot of shady shit in the early version of the internet, but now it just seems like no one can really take care of themselves in the digital sphere. Everyone's just waiting for like the head of Facebook to figure out all their fucking problems. And YouTube is kind of like going down that route too. Like, they really care about, like, everything that they put out. It's it's becoming, like, way more child-friendly than I think it should be. It should be, like, really neutral and open-ended. Like, when I started using YouTube in, in 2006, like, you came up with an idea, you broke out your shitty little Logitech webcam, you recorded something, it took, like, three fucking days to upload, and everybody was happy about it. Now there's, like, so much politics involved in it. Like, I guess, like, it's, it's gotten so big that it's, like, 
really messing people up. It's definitely swaying elections. It's definitely like forcing people to pick sides in their personal life, which I think is really fucked up. But I don't know how you fix that, you know? Like, is banning people the way to fix that? Or do you just let people figure it out for themselves? Like, blocking is an option. Like, if you really don't like somebody on social media, you can just block that person. You have to go, like, write a fucking email to Google about how much you hate this person on YouTube, and then Google has to figure it out. Like, I don't think it should be their job to do that. And, like, at the end of the day, if you really don't like it, you don't have to use it. You can just get rid of social media. I know tons of people in their early to mid-20s now that have just gotten rid of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, because they don't like it. Like, they don't want to be, like, force-fed, hateful shit all goddamn day. Just apocalyptic things coming down their Twitter feed. The world's ending. Trump is the, the fucking, uh, the Antichrist, you know? <laughs> like, if you don't like it, fucking stop, stop doing it then. No one's forcing you to be on Twitter. No one's forcing you to start arguments with people in Oklahoma about random shit that doesn't concern anybody. Just get off of it. Anyway, that's my two cents about it. Uh, I'm going to stop talking about it. <clears throat> Cuz I think there's uh there's only so many things that I can actually say about it right now. Um, I'm going to wait for some new sweet developments on that front. Maybe maybe something some more news will come out I can say something about it, but uh there's really only so much I can say right now. Um, I'm probably going to stop this podcast. I'll keep it really short. I can only talk to myself for so long. It's kind of weird. I'm like sitting alone in a room, just talking into a microphone like I'm a fucking psychopath. Uh, the the people that live live below me or above me probably think I've finally lost my mind. <clears throat> and they'd be right. They would be goddamn right. Um, surrounded by Buddha statues. A weird gold bowl that my buddy bought me from Thailand. There's nothing in it. It's a decorative bowl made of gold. That's how far I've gone. There's no way it's real gold, though. Which is upsetting. But it still looks great. Sweet decorative bowl. But it says 100% on the bottom. Like, what are you doing to me, Thailand? It was like 50 cents. 50 cents Canadian. That's like $3,000 in their, in their money. <laughs> uh, anyways, thanks for listening. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Luke Jamilton. And... If you're on the dark side of the internet, follow me on, on, on Parlor, if that's what you're into. Um, just Luke Hamilton on Parlor. Uh, I haven't really posted anything, so it won't be, won't be any fun, but I don't know. Uh, get into it. Also, I am looking into getting some cameras, so we can do like a video podcast of this. Like, the podcast is also available on YouTube. Uh, the channel is just Luke Hamilton Tonight on YouTube. But there's no actual video. I just have, like, a thumbnail up, and it's just the audio. But I'm really trying to get some reasonably priced cameras so I can actually do a, a video component of this. And you guys can see my pretty face. And I'll be happy about it. But I, I think that's where it's at. You know, you gotta you gotta have a video component of these things, or else nobody really like pays that much attention. Like I still listen to audio versions of of, of, of podcasts, but uh, it's always sweet to just see who's actually talking. 
and the guests and uh, the wild hand gestures that I make. So, um, definitely working on that. Stay tuned for that. Probably in the next month, I'll be able to get that sorted out and put together. But uh, for the foreseeable future, I'm going to keep talking. And I hope you guys will keep listening. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later.